the second day. It is Yumi. It is Moon. It is Turtle Rock. Let's go. Kimiko spawning down in the bottom right here. He is in the blue. Turtle Rock map we've had in this wonderful game of ours throughout many iterations of tournaments time and time again. In the past, humans used to always veto this map as it is impossible for fast expanding. But like I said recently, the rifle pushes have been looking pretty damn good. Archmage opening, tier 2 tech, rifle caster and the blood mage. The Blood Mage is the star of the show nowadays if you go for a rifle play with Banisher and Siphon against the Demon Hunter. And I wonder if Yumiko will attempt that again. Seems to be the go-to nowadays here. All right, I guess uh, Carson doesn't want to work. Okay, I oh, think. I, I can. I, can <laughs> I, just, I just figured this is, you know, this is a really good series. I figured you'd want it, you know? I mean, so we, can, can we, can, we, can, we can switch it up, but uh, you, okay. I I always get to cast, like, the best of the best. But Carson, um, you, with your time zone, you rarely get the chance. So if you want to, feel free and go ahead. All right, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Very excited, too. Very excited. You know, I'm just trying to be, uh, you know, Canadians... Are very uh very kind people we're not very good talkers and we're very ironic and people don't understand our humor but we are generous if anything but Please. i will generously take this offer and cast this with you mr Rima Dima. turtle rock uh you're not a fan of it are you um not really no i think you're an undead player it. though so i get it but I, I mean it's i would say it's rather a good undead map but it's just like i'm a big fan of good new maps and yeah. I suppose uh, it isn't all the map's fault. I also, with my, uh, just denied that creep, Moon. Oh, just denied the creep. That's pretty bad. He almost denied two of them. Um, and that's going to make his level two reaching that. It means he can't get it with the two ogres, right? Yeah. He needs so to creep one of the, one of the trolls. Well. It's a bit of an unfortunate start, but uh, just to wrap up the thought on Turtle Rock, I mainly don't like tournament organizers are always playing the same old map pool. I think this is where most of my dislike for Turtle Rock comes from, mm -hmm. um, because the tournaments keep uh, insisting, especially the Asian ones, to have this tur this map in the pool. It's so old. It's so old, Carson. You wouldn't be able to understand. You're a young buck. This map has been <laughs> around longer than you, I believe. Yes. Um, <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah, this Pretty is much. my biggest problem with it. Also, the old Turtle Rock was a joke, because we used to have a uh, Rune of Healing, which is interesting, and Rune of the Watcher, which was complete BS. Also no critters. Lots of stuff has been improved about the map, but what can't change is the fact that it's still old, and we've seen it a million times. And yeah, I would prefer to have older maps just to wrap this thought up finally. One thing I will say in favor of it is it's very unique. It is mm -hmm. in its layout and it's in its... Um, not synergy, but symmetry. Very much dis, uh, different from most other maps. That is good, but I don't think it outweighs the rest. All right, finally, we're done with the map introduction. Thank you very much, Sonic, with the 1,000 bits as well. It says, whole gang is here. Yes, we are. And finally, we can start talking about the game because here, things will get important. We were saying this map, you're not supposed to be able to expand, but Yumiko tries regardless. Will that work or will it fail? It's looking a bit painful already, to be honest. You have a classic defend expansion on this map. I mean, you're between a rock and a hard place when it comes to expos. Either you go for the turtles, which chaos damage, or you go for this one, which you kind of need defend to do. So Yumiko has a super delayed expansion, but he's taking so much damage. Moon, the keeper is getting quite low, and he's nearly out of mana, out. but this is delayed so he much. Out. He does get out. Oh, no. That's, he shouldn't have let that one slip. I mean, the damage is good. He's going to get the rest of the creeps, but this is rough for Yumi. He's almost got one more round of treants, by the way. He's waiting for the mana. This mantle, by the way, really good. I'm telling oh. you, man. Mantle and slippers early. So busted. And he could summon once again. Don't tell me he gets the last hit. Oh, he stole it! Archers from the shadows. One shot, one kill. Keeper now almost level three. Doesn't get the last one. And now the invis archers standing here might even prevent... The, uh, the building of the town can, I think he can get it on the left side. May, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And also, by the way, that prevents level three Archmage, that Warlord last hit. Okay, Keeper's going to come in. Is he going to go for a Town Hall cancel? He's got five just, archers here. He could summon Treants. He could go for the cancel. Did he just steal this dust, by the way? Oh, and my God. Did shop. he? No, he did get the dust. Okay, okay that would have been so dust. sick. And the staff. Keeper has to TP, TP out now as he sees the AM coming in. Archers moving. Ah, one goes down. Almost the perfect escape. But still a good escape. 
and a level three already for the keeper with that sick harass and last hit. Yeah, still excellent, excellent play from Moon there. Nearly perfect, except for that one archer loss, which was not really preventable. Okay, Yumi, trying to stabilize, gonna get level three Archmage. There's always the possibility of counter pressure when your opponent invests a lot into initial harass. The issue becomes what happens when the other player then attacks. He has got defend Yumiko, he's got level three now. He's got the dust for the archers and the town hall is gonna get up. Level three keeper though is dangerous to say the least. It's gonna have so many rounds of treants here, Carson. This was only the first set of probably four total. 200 mana plus still on this keeper. It can be a bit hard to involve the archers now, as they will be frail, and especially will struggle against the footmen. But we get the second hero joining as well. Here's the panda ready to say hello with a potent breath. I think that's what they call the dad breath online. Footies are holding for now as they're supposed to, but they're also starting to drop low, and the treant count here is going to be what's really troubling. Yeah, this is exactly what you were saying about Turtle Rock. The expansion's so difficult. This is kind of a classic way for human to get destroyed. This was always a map that human players complained about in the past, and nothing's really changed when it came to trying to expand. Oh, the Treants got the tower cancel. Oh, oh that's huge. No. This could be the neck breaker. This means the Treants here will be a threat for the entire time. And I said it, the Keeper here, I love that he's not using Entangle, by the way. I think this would yeah. be a big waste of mana. Just keep spamming out those Treants, baby, one by one. AM, though, with the Watch Elementals, is trying to hold on, being a, doing a decent job so far. I feel like Militia are also necessary. Yeah, they would help a little bit. There's a few footmen being saved. Militia are now being called, but... Yeah, Moon is just behind us. He's just attacking right now. He's staying on tier two for the time being, but he got both lures up. He has two dryads that are a little bit misrallied currently, but they're on their way now. Still has Moonwells back at home. Feels like Moon is just trying to kill Yumiko here. And he very easily could. It's still a tier one human player. Oh, Entangle now might not be the worst call against this TP. I guess it was a staff. Um, but no, saving the mana still. Another round of trees is about to be ready, dude. He's just spamming him. So he is good. a gardener. <laughs> or is he, or is he uh, rather a lumberjack? I guess he's cutting down trees but making treants. That is a question. Very un Night Elf of him, honestly. Um. And we'll leave to the philosophers. We do now have what uh, Dryas, though, speaking of Watch Elementals, and that's going to make the defense here even more difficult. The Watch Elementals were some of the most important key units here to hold on. Now they're going to be a non factor very soon. One more breath of fire. Oh my god. Sick damage being thrown out here by these Night Elf heroes. And tier three now on the way for Moon. Yumiko did manage to heal up. He still has defend footmen. I'm so surprised these footmen haven't done more. Like they've just all been getting picked apart. The panda was an excellent choice in that regard. But Moon out of mana now. Is this the time when he finally has to back away? I think the damage you can safely say has been done, but he continues to pressure on. And he's not really gonna take any losses. He's just gonna kind of take damage. Level two panda straight from harass. Keeper halfway to level four currently, but both heroes getting low for Moon. The Defend is starting to reflect some of that poison back on the Dryads, and Moon might finally go home. Yumiko being granted some space halfway through his Tier 2 tech now needs to tower up. Yeah, with how aggressive Moon was, he was hardly back at home to heal, so the Moon Juice was looking excellent. Although the Keeper now is suckling up a lot of it as the first couple of bears are coming out. And the next power spike for Moon is around the corner. With bears closing out the 50 supply and the master training is going to have a very, very strong 50 supply army. Only thing missing is a few more levels maybe. Panda 3, Keeper 4 would make for a really strong force. Yeah, Yumiko has to make a move here. He's got to make a play. He's got to get something done, but I'm afraid he just can't really do much of anything. Entangled now being used just to clean up the footman. Moon aware of the situation. He needs to dwindle these numbers a little bit or else the pressure could be something to be worried about. Three footmen already falling. And yeah, I just don't think Yumiko is going to get the damage done here that he needs to in order to buy the time. Yeah, it's not even summoning the Watch Elementals. I think that's the right call. Obviously, they would just get the spell, so he's just working with footies and Archmage right clicks. No spells can be of any use right now, but he's putting some decent damage on the Archers and the Dryads. Falling back to the main, there's a bit of juice here still left, and the juice just perfectly works out to keep everything nice and healthy as the Tier 3 is about to round out this Night Elf army. And the moon just is all gone, just as about natural nighttime will be hitting once more. The moon has been playing a wonderful game here. Yeah. Now he's even got the orb, and this is going to be a very strong 50 supply army. Yumiko seems to be in a tough spot, but there is one thing still he has going for himself, and that is lots of gold. 
Yeah, and hopefully for his sake soon, lots of towers. He does reach tier two. Mountain King on the way. But the bear master training is on the way as well. Panda going to be crept to three, I would imagine. And then master training will be done. And then probably one bear bust towards as the expansion of the main, honestly, at this point. Yeah, you say Moon's been playing excellent. I would say this has been pretty much a perfect game for Moon so far. Really good awareness with the Keeper as well. You mentioned the Treants not using Entangle the expansion. And then he switches to Entangle to defend the uh, Footman. Pretty much perfect awareness of how to use the Keeper. And um, so far, no real mistakes. It's level 3 on the Panna. Big level up there. One of mana stealing also. Not to be underestimated these days. 60 mana drain. Used to be 65. It was... Super busted in the early game. I think it's a kind of is against the right heroes. And Moon is trying to counter expand. Not going to go all in with a bust, which might be the right call because there is still a good number of towers that were able to be set up. And we might be slowly sailing towards a macro game. Small detail for Moon, but one I really, really like. As soon as he hit tier three, Wellspring. And then he used a Moonstone, and that'll tie him over until nighttime, which is right around the corner. Just super efficient, clean play for Moon. Um, and you, this could be done consistently as well because, you know, your tier 3 is relatively the same time every game if you're playing this strategy. Just really, really nice execution so far from Moon. Invis pot for Yumiko, trying to find the opportunity to make some space for himself. Keeper finds Keep, the rifle. Yeah, Keeper is finding stragglers. He's got the orb. He has great pickoff potential right now with the entangle and also Treants, possibly. AM trying to go for the big play here with the Invis cancel, but look where Moon's creeping. He's creeping yeah. close to the expansion. He just took the gold mine. Now he's taking the shop. This is beautiful play that we see here. Ben. Yeah, cannot be overstated how perfect this has been for Moon. The dry is going to go back, deal with the water elemental. Panda continues creeping, not wasting any time. Keeper is still around to find yeah, stragglers. Nice it's just, it's just really, really well done for Moon this game, front to back. Those two rifles being picked off slows down Yumiko. It seems like. Yumiko has had uh, no impetus, really, on his side for a long while, trying to get something done with the AM canceling Moonwells, maybe. But now Moon is so strong. There's no canceling the expansion anymore. Now it's nighttime. The Moon is going to be topped off nicely. But also he has, of course, Reju feeling. And the Panda just keeps creeping up. Oh my god. Keeper so good. and Panda, both going to be leveled pretty highly. They might reach level 5 and perhaps even level 6 around the same time as this game. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, you mentioned the panda levels. Another red camp already in the books. Grab double heal scroll as well, because why not? The Mountain King is getting some experience for Yumiko, but I'm afraid the army's just not going to be good enough. I mean, he's getting riflemen. He's got to get a couple breakers now, but he's going to have casters and rifles up against the panda that, as you mentioned, is going to be level five in no time. And uh, again, Moon, just with the Dryads, with the one archer, because why not? Just always finding kills. The panda will probably move on to the next consumable camp. And I just don't see a way out for Yumiko. Maybe, if given enough space, if given enough time, he can get an army that can actually fight. But he's definitely going to need Mountain King level 3 first. Panda decided not to go for Dragon Age this game, by the way. How do we feel Interesting. I haven't really seen that too often against Human, I feel like, but... Um, Maybe better if he wants to just pressure the expansion. You don't really need Haze to kill the towers to kill the peasants. You just breath, run away, breath, run away, breath, run away. But it is an interesting choice. And only especially ultra late game when Lyoth has moon wells and gold enough for mana potions. Seems like yeah. Drunken Haze might be worth it. It's, of course, heavy investment on mana. But if you have it, could be useful. But, uh, well, he's going to be working without it. He still found the mana potion. So still, still lots of breaths to throw out. Yumiko has just the slightest supply and he's trying to finally get the levels and he's got really high scaling potential with his heroes as well. Blizzard Clap can be one of the best counters to bears in the very late. And then finds a, a Sork because why not? Finds a Rifleman because why not? Oh, the man, Panda's in the main kills. base. It's amazing from Moon. Two more kills. Invis, I think was attempted there or maybe that was something else that I saw. Okay, Cloak of Flames, level 3 Mountain King. Yumiko's got to be ready to fight now or else he's never going to be able to. Moon has been playing, outplaying Yumi quite hard this game, I would say. Yumiko is still benefiting from all this gold, has the slight supply lead I was mentioning before. MK out of the shadows. Stormbolt, clap. This seems to be a bad position here for Moon. May not want to fight in here. He's going to use the staff, use the TP, get out with one more greeting from the Panda Breath. And Yumiko is trying to expand a second time, which we're, we don't know if Moon knows about just yet. 
Yeah, I don't think that's the worst choice. Yumiko's got to do something special here. He can't just stay two base, two base and hope to win in the long run because Moon's just going to continue pressuring now that the Panda's level five and he's going to burn a whole lot of heal scrolls in doing so. A lot of dryads for Moon. Yumiko, of course, has no mortar teams yet. Maybe a workshop could be something he looks to in the future. But for now, just continued creeping. Mountain King close to level four. That will be a big upgrade because it is Clap Bolt currently in this game. What is That's the item exciting. there? Okay. Look at the love item, it. man. Yeah. That is like perfect items. He needs more inventory slots for all these items. He also would love the <laughs> ring. And scroll the beast too for the rifleman. It's going to be pretty good unless there's just going to be mass abolished. There's enough dryads to do that, of course. Just getting the expo with a wisp, but there's going to be three towers up. Already at that red camp. Moon also expanding again at the red. So three base, three base. We could be going to late game if Yumiko can hold out for another two, three minutes. I would love to see tier three here by Yumi. Yeah. Yumi has so many upgrades coming from that direction, but also so many expenses they need to cover on tier two only. Heal scrolls especially. So, so important. Goes for both sides. Yumiko has none. Players no, he's got one. Scroll of healing and scroll of the beast. Are we going to see the first big fight? Breakout finally. Panna starts it off with a breath of fire, but the Clap Blizzard also doing wonderful. Supposed to counter the bears, of course. There's not even that many bears, though, to be honest. No. Mainly dryads in this battle. Oh, Panda. I like the focus fire on the Panda. Get him out. He's the carry of the fight. The potion of vulnerability will have to be used on the Mountain King. The bears do find some attack surface area there eventually, Ooh. but the TP is forced, and Yubiko finds the space that he needs, Remo Demo. Dude, the Keeper almost died. That was so close. Less than 50 yep. HP, I think it was. And Yumiko, despite kind of struggling for a long stretches in this game, seems to be now in a good position. He's got the three base. Moon doesn't quite yet, but will have it soon. And we're getting towards ultimate armies over here. We see more teams coming in as well. Very good from range against Dryads. But I always feel like not really good. Not that good anyways, without tier three. Yumiko, yep. problem for him seems to be the Lumber. Oh, never mind. He just got enough lumber magically. Would love to see tier three. Hit that, hit that castle button, baby. Yeah, I mean, he's at 80 supply. What's the heal scroll count? Not quite good enough, but he's going to get there now with two. Yeah, I think the, the lumber thing you mentioned is is a, a, a important point on this map. You don't always know you're going to have enough for inner fire, for frag shards, for maybe night upgrades, etc. On a map like Turlock where there is no shredder and the lumber is already kind of bad, but it seems like Yumiko hasn't been struggling too much at all so far. He's got more lumber than gold currently. Mortar team numbers are rising. And one flying machine just to scout for probably what's going to be many expansions in the future for Moon. Still a red camp available, I might add. Could be a nice item. I do like the mountain giant that we see here a lot. Very good against any tier 2 human army. If he's upgraded. Did he get the upgrades? Yes. Yes, he did. Supposed oh, to the trees. Lots of damage. Oh, the mortar team play. Yeah, yeah trying to see get to go. The, inside the little forest. Advanced plays right there. Positioning pretty good if he can get in there with the mortar teams, but uh, a little bit stunted in his growth. Here is Yumiko because Moon comes right in. Again, focus fire on the panda. I think the hero focus might be the right call. If you fight straight up, if you let the panda use all of his mana, you're just going to get ripped apart. Positioning seems a little spread apart for Yumiko currently. Not having Drunken Haze, I think, is really hurting him. Panda never has the ability to use all of his mana. Yeah. Might be worth considering going for a Tomb of Retrain later. They get so much gold income after all. What are they spending their resources on? Yumiko is still not going tier 3. This is the one thorn in my side here. I feel like this is this would have been by far the best investment of resources for him. He would have already been there. Sometimes it feels far away. It feels like that tech transition that just cannot possibly happen when you're under a lot of pressure. But I always say, you know, just press the button. Go tier three, put the building down, whatever it might be, get the upgrade, and you'll be surprised how much time you actually are able to get. Sometimes you just get stuck, like, I'll just build breakers and hope I win. But Yumiko, in this case, don't think is going to win on tier two, as you mentioned. Lab Blizzard once again looking really good. We can see now Moon clearly trying to not run into that counter by going not too many bears. He's got mostly dryads and a few bears, plus perhaps more mountain giants later. Heal scroll was used. The Pan is finding a good connection with the Breath of Fire. Still, no Drunken Haze to amp that damage up even more. Hero's now starting to drop low. MK might be looking for a target soon. He's got one more clap and Stormbolt. Here we see the clap, the Dryad's trying to dance. Moon, of course, the best Dryad micro player in the world. But everything dropping now very low on the Nidal side. And I'm Three bears. As well. 
has to be staffed and TP out. The MG close to dying, but now Moon with the escape. Lost a bunch of bears and dryads. Might replace them with more MGs. Nope, more bears it is. We got a game now. The mortar teams, you mentioned the frag shards earlier, really, really lacking that right now. These dryads would have been getting demolished had there been frag shards, but uh, they just aren't that impactful without it, unfortunately. If they can connect, great, but Moon's never going to allow that to happen. He had a perfect dryad positioning there, but I do feel like Yumiko got the kills that he needed, and we are getting into the late game now. Three base, three base. Could be looking for a fourth if we're in Moon's position. That is sort of what he's known for. But uh, yeah, tier three is still to be desired for Yumiko. I would say Moon is looking kind of frail right now. He wasn't able to fully heal. He has to wait for the new bears to come to heal. But the MG is still hurt. The panda is hurt. The Moon Juice is low. This is the painful time when fighting rages on for an extended period for the Night Elf because it wasn't nighttime for a long time. But that's going to change soon. Moon is going to become a lot stronger here with nighttime falling again, and then he's going to be benefiting from so many moon wells. He's got eight moon wells in the main. This was the struggle phase this daytime. Now, Moon has a second win coming his way. Four mortar teams, and the trees have been breached. The tree of life. Is Keeper. Yeah. Keeper's got the force of nature, buddy. True. This yeah, is true. not a safe haven in here. Yeah. And Moon will definitely find that solution faster than anyone in the world. Mortar team, so four of them don't take too long to kill the tree. How long is it going to take Moon to realize this Force of Nature play? This needs to uproot. Okay. They can just move. He can move into a safe position. He just, what did he just dust for? <laughs> oh, the vision of the Mountain King, possibly? Ah, oh, yeah. I was expecting that, but it's, of course, instead a flying machine. Sometimes you can see the uh, the forest for all the trees, so maybe the keeper isn't realizing he can use the force of nature here. But he's got other expansions yeah. mining. Working on a fourth base. AP uh, coming up at the fourth base of Yumiko currently. And Moon maybe struggling to find a way to engage here. His army seems so strong, but it also did in the last fight at Yumiko's main, and he struggled there too. 78 supply apiece. Game of the patience panda. right now. Yeah. If Yumiko goes out too far out of the forest, Moon's going to collapse from every angle. Oh, he's got a demon or third. Ooh, oh, that's smart. We kind of There's forgot so to mention this. Ultra late game. I love this. Both other heroes are level five already. And the demon hunter mana burn supposed to counter the strongest weapon Yumi has in the mountain game. He's going to be able to get level three. Orange camp and the turtle after this red available. Might even just need the orange in between the, the two bases there to get level three. Worth noting though, Panda on his way to level six, and this is going to severely delay it. Keeper caught out of position. This might be a TP. No, staff available, of course. And still, Moon getting hero focus time and time again. Needs to be careful about that, especially with three heroes now. Yo, here's a Makosh with a big 50 euro donation. Says my usual contribution. Thanks again and again. Boys, thank you so much, Makosh, for the support. That's a big one. Helps us out a lot, makes this all possible. Dima Hunter took a long time to get the creeps in. It cost Moon one base, but he's got a new expansion up now. Gold wise, we have Yumiko ahead. And he did, by the way, finally get Castle. Thank yes. You. Good, sir. Absolutely necessary. He gets there, he's getting all the upgrades. And I do love Yumiko's tower choice as well. Triple Arcane at that second base, or the third base from earlier. Now double Cannon Tower, Triple Arcane. You can't fight here if you're Moon. You you never can fight here. He will You will lose the fight if you're fighting in range of these towers. They're so effective. Like, guard towers just aren't going to do anything at this stage in the game. Two Cannon Towers, however, and the Arcanes are going to counter both the Dryads and the Panda perfectly. It's an amazing tower usage here. And fun fact, Frag Shards does work on Cannon Towers these days. Oh, I never Dryads. knew that. <laughs> The Dryads, I wonder if they're going to do anything. Really. What is their purpose now? For a bit of catch, they're good, but I would much prefer them to see them in lower numbers. It turns out, I think, I think Chims would be pretty good here, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, I think so. We do have Fairy Dragons coming in now. That's going to force maybe even high upkeep. It's always hard when it gets to this stage in the game. I would say, especially for the human, to have all the right answers for everything. So Yumiko's going to need to get a handful of flying machines. Which is going to be tough with the Panda level 5. Super crazy game here. Almost every day is taken, kind of. Demon Hunter has some good items as well. 
Almost all the creeps are gone. Oh, Invis Mortar Squad! Oh, oh, little sneak attack over here. Damn, dude, I haven't seen this in a while. Yeah, Getting God, ready so to sick. snipe a base. Should he uproot here? I guess he certainly should. By the way, we do have Trim Roost coming. We have a Blood Mage third coming. We are exploring <laughs> all the tech trees here. Love this it. First map. Oh my God. TP damage. immediately. Nice reaction Lordy. from the moon. Oh, needs to uproot though. Where's the uproot? Okay, it was enough. Whew. One mortar team down. TP for one mortar. Well, obviously uh -huh. TP's traded. That's Damn a fun man. play. Always yeah. with the invis. How many more times can you do that though? Yumiko building a big army now. 88 supply. Four base human against four base night elf. <laughs> the ultra late game. On map one. Amazing game. And we have nothing but this matchup probably for the rest of the day, unless it's a mere matchup in our third game, our third 1v1. Blood Mage is now out, but it won't have the luxury of creeping to level 3 like the Demon Hunter did, and will also severely slow down the level 5 Mountain King, which is still lacking, but still necessary to control that Panda, to give more mana to the Mountain King especially. Okay, could be our first big high upkeep fight in the center here. I don't honestly like Moon's chances. It I suppose it depends on the both the Panda and the Fairy Dragon connection at the start of this fight. Yeah, if he fights out in the wide open where he's positioning, I think this would favor him a lot more. We have two chims coming now, but as we saw yesterday, they take a long time to complete. Team Hunter being pressured quite a bit. We'll be able to get a mana burn off, but there's still plenty more mana where that came from. And this is the first high upkeep engagement. The mortar teams are doing so much damage with the Blizzard right now. He's using the Siphon onto the Mountain King to have more mana, throw out more clap. It's a lot of AoE spells here being used. Panna looking for the big breath of fire, and there go a few gyros. Mountain King! The entire early. Oh, and the MK goes down, used the invuln early on. The MK was forgotten about the staff. Get double staff ready, but the army wasn't in range. MK back from the tavern. It's a good thing about four bases. You have a lot of gold. But Moon is pressing on. Looking for more kills, looking for more level ups as well. The Panda's almost six. The Keeper's getting closer. The Demon is close to four. And this is all before the Chims. Oh, it looks so good for Yumiko at the start of the fight, but now he's starting to crumble with that Mountain King loss. Still ahead in supply, though. Demon Hunter and Panda both staffed out. Nice usage there from Moon to prioritize everything. And the TP forced Yumiko took a Mountain King loss, had to tavern it, used all of his items, but at the end of the day, does again force Moon to back away. And now the Tree of Life exposed. It's only one of four, but still chims on their way does yumiko know about these does he have enough flying machines doesn't seem like he has any currently tp in to try to defend this human army all of a sudden not so scary anymore no high upkeep anymore only 76 supply stormbolt and siphon on the panda right away but it's only level one siphon it's okay but it's not so impressive at this point in the game really onto the mk once again but the mana is gone good mana burn is there from the demon hunter more team damage yeah everything's hurt Moon needs heal scrolls so bad. The panda low as well. The panda close to six. Gets it now. Doesn't have mana though for the ult. Keeper level six. Where is the track? Oh, that tranquility could save everything. Oh, oh and now the Archmage is going to have to TP. The demon. Everything oh, low. Oh, no way, dude. Are you kidding me? Mountain the King now. gets out on low HP as well. MK <laughs> also. Oh, my God. Every hero. The tranquility timing, Remo Demo. The deep, tranquility. Deep trouble. <laughs> Ridiculous. Where have this, these chims been, by the way? They never showed up. I feel like the <laughs> first round, when he made them, he canceled them perhaps again, because they took forever, but now they're ready. Now we got two ults, three, three upgraded army for the Night Elf, and Yumiko is about to run out of gold, buddy. Yeah, Yumiko had to win the game probably right before the ultimates in that fight. Worth noting as well, really smart for Moon to rebuy the TP. He TP'd immediately into the expansion to defend it, to not lose it, but he also bought another one from his shop before doing that, so he wasn't stuck in the middle of the map without a TP. Um, and yeah, that ultimate, the two ultimates now, one of which we've seen, I don't think there's any way to counter it for Yumiko. He doesn't have the hero levels currently. We'll see if he can Bojangle a play, but it's not looking likely. MK with the perfect position for the clap, but the rest of the army just looks pretty unimpressive at this point. The Chins make absolute mincemeat of these mortar teams as well. The magic damage, insane at 3 3 upgrades. Smacking a bit of roar, even. Archmage, uh oh, in trouble here. Almost goes down thanks to the entangle, but he's saved via the staff. 
It just seems like everything the human now is throwing in just easily gets absolutely obliterated. And it is game. GG and 1-0 for Moon. Have we had another crazy game. What a game. Yo, Moon also disappears from the camera for a second. That was exhausting. 30 minutes. Guys, we've seen it all. That tranquility timing. Gotta double down on that. That was perfect. Not sure if it saved him the game or if that was like game deciding, but the timing was just perfect. Demon Hunter about to die, three bears about to die, snap you get level six and everything is healing up again. Ah, that was glorious, glorious Warcraft. Glorious, glorious Warcraft. Seven bases, eight bases. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> this is the Warcraft we love to see. Yeah, every unit other than Huntress and Glaive Thrower, I think, for Moon. <laughs> True. Pretty close to every unit for Yumiko there. Man. Just no no air units other than flying machines. I think that was what was missing. Griffin aviaries. We also had Polymorph ready. I was waiting for it. I had got my meh ready, but never never arrived because Sorcerer's numbers were too crazy. Oh man, I want I want to see a full best of five between these guys and people love what they see. People support like crazy. Who was it this time? We got we cracked the 4100. Who was it? It was a lot of you guys chipping in with the profile pictures. Love it. Thank you Slothian, Martial Spirit, Custom. Wonderful. Wonderful to see. Wonderful to see these guys after all these years Still creating such a beauty. Yeah, and that was with such a terrible, terrible early game. Like, pretty much the first 10, 12 minutes for Moon was, was absolutely perfect. Everything was perfectly done. And Yumiko still stretches the game out for such a long time. But it was really the early game that won it for Moon in the late game because he had the hero level advantage, he got the ultimates, and then it's no longer winnable with that army. Unfortunately, when there's Panda 6, when there's Tranquility, and when you don't have Mountain King 5, Blood Mage 3 at that stage, you're just kind of screwed because you can never control those heroes. Um, but yeah, so that early game was so good, Yumiko still fights back. So on a map like Northern Isles in, in game number two, Yumiko is going to have a lot better chances because this expo is not Turtle Rock. It's a lot easier. Yeah, was about to say the same, like how close this was after this early game. I worry a bit about Moon, I gotta say, for the rest of the series. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I wonder if you can play perhaps some uh, stronger transitions before the ultra late game. We saw how the MK really took over once the MK got level four with those insane items. He is so good with Clap Lizard against uh, the bears. I think the addition of... Demon Hunter wasn't just novel and cool, it was also kind of necessary. If he doesn't have that to counter the heroes, I mean, it did slow down, to be fair, the level sixes. But would the level sixes alone have saved him? Really cool play by Moon. Absolutely in love. I think at one point there towards the end, he was just too big to fail. He had so much gold and it became a lot about gold with all these expansions. It seemed like for the human in the ultra late game, in the macro uh, part of the game, for some reason, it feels like they have more expenses to recover from fights. I guess that's also where the moon wells come in. That's yeah, weird, right? Because priests and aura, you would think they're recovering right away, but they always have to rebuy heal scrolls. Moon does, of course, but you know he can always TP out, rejuve, use moon wells. Um, he can fight for a while and then TP out. Whereas if Yumiko doesn't have double heal scroll, he just loses everything because he has many more squishy units. Uh, so maybe that's where it becomes more and more expensive, but. Guard this game number two. A few less bases on Northern Isles, but I imagine the series is just getting started. But the community is not getting started. They're continuing to support and support and support and support. It's insane. Spaßbremse, thank you very much for the 13 month resub. And Cuddy Sarkness with a hundred dollars. A hundred dollar. Dono, on top of the Marcos 50 euro dono, you guys are absolutely fantastic, just as the games are. Holy shit, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Beautiful. Beautiful support. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll try to give you guys that back because these games, these games deserve some support, you know? These players, these players are putting it all on the line right now giving it their best, giving it their all, and they must make sure here to do their best in 
the first match they play because unlike in many other War 3 Champions season finals, there is no lower bracket here. It's a single limb bracket. You lose and you're out. Also the reason why it's all best of five. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you also Hanzo Ray with the resub. Let's focus now on our second map. Northern Isles is the choice. It will be a very different game. It's going to be a game with Demon Hunter first and a tavern build. What? He's cheesing about. He's cheesing about, dude. Is this going to be either Naga or Tinker Tower Rush? Or is it going to be something that's actually a real strat, not just a cheese? Is it going to be like a Fire Lord first or something? And I also asked the question, how good is Dima Hunter if it is a Tower Rush? Does Yumiko know something we do not? Does he know that Moon plays DH on Northern Isles? Because Keeper obviously going to be a lot better against cheese strategies than DH. Yeah, TH used to be the king of these cheese strats, especially on Echo Isles, very popular back in the day. Moon has now scouted it. And yeah, normally human would make uh, the hero choice dependent on the hero. If it's uh, if it's a warden, you go Tinker. If it's a demon, you go Naga, especially mm -hmm. like you pointed towards. And I've seen so many plays also transition away from the all-in tower push, but rather make the elf over it defend and then just go for a straight up, you know, normal expansion <laughs> game. What? It is an alchemist first. For you, Miko. He's playing straight up. He's calling Militia. He's going to the expansion. It was a little bit of a giveaway when he went for a scout tower in his main base before the hero was even out. If he's going to tower rush, no way he does that. Moon is reacting, as you mentioned, with a third moon well before the tech. So he is aware of this. But now seeing the alchemist, maybe he's going to think, okay, I can maybe just put up a counter expansion and play the play a macro game with his alchemist first. Oh, he's spray first. Looking for the surround, and he's going to get it as well. Forced the TP out right away. The hell is well, all that HP here for no reason. I think he went heal spray also to have possibly something against Immolation, which is mm -hmm. not a concern here. What will be a concern soon, though, is going to be Hunt's baby, because we got a Hunter's Hall coming and a second Ancient of War. Moon, not at all interested in playing a macro game, counter expansion. And the Archer just stole the last hit. Are you kidding me? That's level two gone, is it not? Yeah, she did. <laughs> oh my god, dude. The last hit skills by Moon. Archer does it again. Demon Hunter now almost level 4. Ring for him is great. Talisman Evasion for the Alchemist is also not too shabby. Ooh, Yumi. Getting jiggy with that nice movement with the Footman and the Alchemist. Making sure to not take a lot of last hits. Goes to the surround. Wouldn't be able to hold it anyway, though. There we go. Moon's got to be careful. If he loses the Demon Hunter, it's going to give level 2. It's going to give so much more space to get that expansion up. Footman scouts the tier one, sees the three wells, doesn't see or sees the Hunter's Hall as well. He should know what's coming his way, Yumiko. I'm still kind of scratching my head here about the Alchemist. Seems like this hasn't been the most impressive hero just yet. He used two heal sprays on not many targets to heal. Now he is out of mana. The age old problem against the Demon Hunter, which makes him so fun to play against. Yumiko is already scouting for some APs coming up to the south of his main base. But there's nothing there, nothing yet anyways. We will be revealed soon other Huntresses. One footy scout in the middle, sees it early. I think Yumi knows what to expect. Yeah, excellent knowledge from Yumiko. He scouted the Huntress Hall with the footman in the main base and then immediately called the Militia and scouted for the APs both sides. And he's re-scouting again. This is very well done. Um, he's struggling for sure, mana, health-wise. Um, this defense might not be the easiest, but he's definitely doing everything he can currently. AP is now coming up towards the expansion, but there's already a tower coming up as well. Yumiko, is he aware of this? Nighttime can sometimes be very deceptive. The building might not actually be in range to see the APs. If you do, normally you have to run in there quick with militia, and lots of militia indeed could be called. Alchemist, though, so hurt. Great positioning on the hunts, keeping the forces away from the expansion. And one AP seems now damn near guaranteed to finish. And those towers do have reinforced, uh, I mean, fortified armor, unlike the human towers. Are under attack. Shop coming up in the back for Yumiko. Tower now being upgraded in the main base. That is a guard tower. There's also going to be one of the expansion that's going to finish with the AP, as mentioned. Will come up, will now be shown. Not too much of a threat currently, but once there's two, it's going to be very hard to break that without defend. AP marches forward, but the guard tower will be done on time. Yumiko seems to be under a lot of pressure, but it's not an impossible situation for him. And yeah, the one thing Moon doesn't have is wisps across the map for a bit more repair. Seems like those the will Huntress. be needed later on. Look at this, Rima Dima. The Huntress in the main base, shadow melding. He can't heal. He can't oh, clarity. He can't do anything. No way, dude. He's using reveal. 
kill the Huntress. Might cost him five reveals to do so. Yeah, he's got to do it, though. He has no other option. Oh, my God. It's taking forever. In the meantime, APs against the guard tower at the expansion. That one has to be mass repaired, and the repair will be enough. But Peasant's taking lots of damage. Reveal again in the main base. The guard tower helps taking out the Huntress. It's still not dead, but it's basically dead by now. One more reveal. There it goes. It's level two, finally. There's yet more hunts down here as well. Pressuring the Peasants, pressuring the footies. Demon's level two. There's still stuff happening with the APs on the left. Oh my god, I'm glad I don't have to multitask this. Very stressful situation for both, especially for Yumiko. He might be about to lose his expansion. There is a play for Yumiko. He can call Militia. He has a tower almost two in his main base. He can call Militia and TP to the expo, killing both APs. Yeah, and then he might it. lose some peasants. There it is. Perfect. Wait, uh, call to arms though. Not on all of them, but on a bunch of them. Surrounds him right away. Gets the catch on the APs. The Demon Hunter now late to the party. Hunt's running over. Trying to repair still. Can he take out both these APs? Surprise Moon didn't see this play. He should have probably not showed the Huntresses in the main base. The first hunt to cancel the healing was great. Maybe the Demon Hunter as well, but he should have kept the hunts nearby. This was always going to be the play. Now with the APs going down, Yimko's still on two base. Maybe he can get a Blacksmith up, and he has towers in both bases. He might be able to stabilize. Seems indeed like he will. Alchemist also going for a hunt after these Glaives. We have a bunch of Glaives now, though. This is serious damage against the Town Hall. Perhaps enough yep. to bring it down what's the next step for you me the main base kind of in shambles lumber is low tech is miles away but the glaives here without a support from ap's have a tough time indeed yeah, especially with chemical rage it's going to be able to chase those down indefinitely so these will fall there was pressure on the town hall for a while and yumiko still has to heal up the alchemist this is a problem that it will have in perpetuity for the rest of the game he needs to get back to the shop, but he's not even going to be able to heal up that much. Still one Glaive left over and more APs on the way. Moon seems to be very committed. No tech to follow this up. No expansion either. 60 seconds is how long the APs take. Will there be enough time for them to finish? Alchemist right now with the clarity. We have a Zeppelin for Yumi. We'll see if we can look for a play with that one. And what's Moon making? 39 supply for him. Is there more glaives? Yes, there will be. Moon is the one who could really use Zeppelin, but not a crap can't afford it right now. Town Hall still being repaired. A second glaive will mean a lot more pressure and these APs will get up. <laughs> Yumiko has to do it all over again. The question becomes, has he gotten enough gold from this expansion to justify maybe giving it up? I mean, he's still tier one. He's getting a second barracks now, but uh, he might have to give it up. It might be tier one, tier one, one base, one base. Committing to the kill now, but there's mass repair, hunts fall back, and now with hunts and towers, APs that is, um, the footy's gonna have a tough time taking this fight. This time the hunters are indeed in position to protect these protectors. Lumber, gone. Out. No repair. Oh, no repair, you're right. No lumber means no repair, and this town hall will fall, must fall, as Moon finally takes out the objective. Took a while, but he got there in the end. If two APs fail, just rebuild them again, as it seems. The Zeppelin was not here. I don't know if it would have made a difference. It would have helped anything. The Lumber was the issue, but the Alchemist might need to be saved. And now, is this game savable for Yumiko? He's got two barracks still. Not a lot of Lumber, but enough peasants in the main base to attack eventually. It's still tier one apiece, still one base apiece. And the hero levels are close to even if Yumiko can get one creep camp. Might not be impossible to try to play it out a little longer, but it's going to be tough for Yumi. Yeah, if he had lost his expansion with the tech almost finished, I would have said this could have been a good position for Yumi. With Archmage second, casters, rifle casters are absolutely amazing. Unbeatable for Huntresses. Yeah. But there was just no lumber. No tech was ever started. Yumiko is still so far away from keep. Moon, on the other hand, pretty rich. He just started his tech. Starting to cruise now towards tier 2, but he also is still uh, getting pretty confident with his standing army. He's going to keep on pressure with these hunts and glaives, looking for yet more kills. Healing up very, very efficiently. Main base being pressured. Yumiko just needs health on his alchemist. Those throwers are going to kill one barracks, but luckily there is two. Tier 2 now also being started for Yumiko. Finally, in this game, no blacksmith though, so no rifleman yet. Two towers is going to help. Glaives will eventually tear that down. 
And Noon seems to be breaking the base. Yumiko's got to defend eventually. He's dropping into the back. Zeblin finally finding some use, but not finding the kills just yet. This barracks seems also to be, to be going down. Militia call from the main is pretty strong. Nice. Okay. All right, takes out one glaive here, but honestly, the glaives have done what they're supposed to. They've served their purpose. Well, a couple hunters is at risk of being surrounded, but Yumiko not finding... I think he needed to find a couple of kills there. If he got two, three huntresses, got to level three on the alchemist, that defense could have put him in a better position, but just one glaive and Moon backs away with the tech advantage. Yumiko, a thousand gold though. Can he macro into some sort of an army? As you mentioned, Archmage second, Rifle Caster could be the play. He's finally got the resources needed. Lumber is no longer an issue. The Blacksmith is now coming. But also, he's going to need the hero, of course. He's going to need the Blacksmith. He's going to need more farms still. Lots of things that Yumi is still in need of. Whereas Moon can hit the tier 3 button pretty soon. He's got resources. He's got a heal scroll now as well. Oh. He Moon? cancels his own telly stab there, it seems Oops. like. Scroll the Beast. Ooh, is there a potential with the Scroll the Beast to maybe go for a Zeppelin drop into the main base, pop the scroll, and go for... I mean, I know it's Footman, but go for a tree kill? At least maybe some lore cancels if he knows the timing. But he's got to make some sort of a aggressive play, I think, Yumiko. Might just sell it. Being behind in tech here is uh, no good news for him. For sure. That's something though he doesn't know. We have the perfect vision. The players can just estimate. Moon perhaps has scouted the timing. We expect him to go tier 3 right away and that he does do. The lores are coming up. Yeah, I think what she mentioned earlier. Zeppelin drop against the lores or against something. Needs to be the attempt here. Just some sort of play that isn't fighting directly is what he needs to do here. He needs to buy time. He needs to do damage to Moon economically. You can kill Huntresses all day, but eventually they're just going to be, you know, suicide to creeps anyway. They're not going to be used as the final army. Hitting the kills only pretty much grants you experience at this stage. So yeah, he needs to do something else, and that's exactly what he's going for. Eight footmen in a Zeppelin. Scroll the Beast and a heal scroll. Maybe he could get, I don't know, a lore kill, a gold mine kill. I'm not sure. Tier 3, Workshop, and Blood Mage, by the way. This is looking like Angry Korea Man over here. What the hell is he going for? <laughs> Knight Mortar Team? So far, it is unclear. Buying time, though. Panda's still only level 2. Staff's all the way back home. I, I don't know what he's buying time for. A mortar team. Mortar team. Three towers. <laughs> Classic Yumiko right there. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Find out together soon. It is certainly a bit of a riddle so far. Yeah, it's always a question at this stage of the game. Was this always his plan, or is he just freeballing it with the expansion being lost with how the game, with how weird the game is? Is he just making it up as he goes along, or is he following through with the plan he had from the start? Was this what he would do if he was on two base still? Is a question. I can say with confidence, I've never seen this before. <laughs> yeah. Mage, Alchemist, oh, ca cannon towers, maybe? <laughs> mortar teams. Yeah, there's cannon towers. It is cannon towers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Um, that is very good against hunts. Believe it or not. I believe it. This time. Oh, the demon hunter, though. The presence here by Moon. Absolutely outstanding. Forces the human army back, but he's going to get one cancel for sure. Don't wait, dude. But, 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 he didn't cancel it. Come on. <laughs> All right, might still finish then. <laughs> Re-upgrade, and there we go. And five peasants here. One cannon tower arguably will be enough against the Huntresses. It's just Hunts and Dryads. Moon going to have to break up Keep just to get bears. So Yumiko is going to have some space unless Moon wants to break up Keep right away to get an expansion established again. Love this Demon Hunter play. Moon with his efficiency and movement across the map. Always a glory to behold. Mostly he does that more so with Keeper, but he's also showing he can do it with a demoner. 
yeah. keeping Yumiko so busy, pulling him apart as the panda keeps on accelerating. This guy was so late to the party, but look at him now. Level four already. If that isn't a sign for all of us that despite our crappy our life might be, there's always a way back. Beautiful, beautiful. And the panda is gonna find a way to level five mortar teams, <laughs> dropping three mood wells under pressure. But the demon hunter, you mentioned the movement, always perfect always where it needs to be staffs back and defends it but still annoying for moon currently he's gonna have to allow these cannon towers in this expansion to get up for the time being all right yumiko has finally an expansion <laughs> again second workshop <laughs> i respect it i respect everything going on on yumiko's side of the map right now shredder baby all right we're macroing up even harder just go tanks now. Screw it. What else? What else is there? I mean, there's got to be a panda level five, but not a lot of bears. Not a lot of gold for Moon, who's getting an ancient of wind now, probably just to deal with that Zeppelin, realizing Yumiko is going full lame mode. Yeah. Pendant usage, swapping back and forth. Nice. Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it takes to win. Does he have Dragon Ace this time? Okay, he does. It's almost wondering if perhaps he has found a new dislike for that spell. Panda has crept all the way to level five after this creep camp. I believe it's going to be close at least, close enough. Going to find, trying to find an angle. If he can get a red, it'd be nice, but he might, have to he might have to town portal back. If he TPs back, the cannon towers will be enough. If he does not, the panda's just going to kill all of them. Place to level five. That level 5 is going to be doing some juicy damage. The Demon Hunter is still scouting across the map, creating space. Oh, there is no TP. And a web from the goddamn oh, creeps. This is one of the most annoying things that can happen to you on this map. It's around and the Demon is in, but also the Panda is at the expansion, using the cannon towers to do a bit of friendly fire against the peasants here, believe it. <laughs> they do a lot of damage to heroes, though. Look at this. Oh, Huntress has come in. A little bit of a creep jack here, but the creeps are going to be run away from. Panda cleans up the cannon towers, and this is what I mean. Like, Yumiko needed to be there with the towers to defend at all, but now they're going down, and now that's a weakness. Yumiko can't really make up for. Staff is there, a bit of mana drained, but the towers are gone. That means floodgates open once again for the Hunts, who are chasing down footies and mortar teams right now. This army is too small and not enough of a front line for the mortars to really be too effective. Pally third. I'm sorry, did you say that? <laughs> Pally third. <laughs> Pally third, maybe. Uh oh. So weird. And there's a tank at the expansion. Both mortar teams should be safe. Nope, the Zeppelin goes down. And Moon getting all the kills right now. Panna goes back home to deal with this tank threat, if you want to call it that. I mean, it's the Moon Wells, they are a threat. Paladin died in the meantime. Hunts and Demon looking for more kills. It's a lot of damage, actually. One oh, upgrade on these hunts. And that this spell will be enough for the kill. And the GG. What a game, guys. What a game. Moon. Absolute chat dealing with this, but also Yumiko, man. He's making this series so fun. I think yeah. the idea behind this was, okay, you're coming at me with your Demon Hunter immolation, as Knight of Always does. I'm going to go Alchemist and stop this with my heal spray. But Moon 5 had just went mana burn. And then there was no heal spray. And then there was no use for this Alchemist. <laughs> and then, yeah, just craziness, man. I thought later on um, he might have tried to put mortars into the forest and attack the entangled but that didn't work either not too much coming together for yumi but damn was that still a lot of fun very fun yeah i, I would like to see that strategy followed through entirely to see what he wanted but uh hey you know maybe we have a chance in game three maybe yumiko will establish the new meta of alchemist first this, uh, yeah, quite, quite a gamble, I gotta say. Uh, sorry, by the way, for the, for the 
in-game camera for a second, my fire alarm went off. I guess these games are just too hot to handle. <laughs> Are you all right? Is your, is your house burning down? The dead? battery is empty. Oh, very nice. Oh, the little beeping thing. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Annoying. It was yeah. a very, very loud beeping. It uh, it, it needs new juice. It, uh, I've got had it, that for weeks weeks on end before. <laughs> Why did you just, you just yeah. block it out mentally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a degenerate. <laughs> what can I say? Mind over matter, bro. Mind over yeah, matter. sorry about that. But thank you, Sonic, for 2,500 bits. Damn. Feels like a good time to hit 100k bits. That is outstanding, oh man. That is outstanding. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sonic. You're with us for, I don't know, man, forever. For as long as I can think. Um, thank you. Yeah, I feel like I've been here for all those bits, too. Every single stream I see Sonic. 100 here, 200 there, 1,000 here, and 2,500 today. Appreciate you, dude. Whew. Stressful situation for Yumiko now. His game plans are not coming together on Turtle Rock very risky. On Northern Isles very risky. Uh, what is next on the menu? It's Tide Hunters. And I feel like yeah. there's uh, less wiggle room on Tide Hunters. Hmm. No Man Tide Hunters makes for a much safer expansion. This is usually for many humans the go-to map where they can... Uh, Rely on a safe Archmage creep route, a safe expansion, safe pressure play. And if they have a good early, perhaps even put some good pressure on the Night Elf in return, especially if they find themselves with a timely level three. That being said, it can also be a really good map for Keeper. If the Night Elf creep route and movement is on point, I've also seen Keeper destroy this map. In general, in most situations, though, I do like this a bit more for human. If All right. they get the Arcane Tower up. That is always the big if. True. Gentlemen. Moon yeah, ready. That, uh, Give it. It's been an issue in the past on this map. I think it's such a weird, it's such a weird problem. That's specifically this map. It seems like it's just a timing thing that tends to work out. But we'll see. We'll see how Yumiko plays this one. He's been a weirdo so far in the best way possible. I can only agree, man. I wish you. All the best and more Yumi craziness. Moon with match points on the way to the quarterfinal. But uh, Yumi is bringing quite some interesting games. Let's go. Okay. Tidehunters, map three. Yumi with one more shot to make it work. He's definitely not had the best of early games in either game one or game two. And he's managed to make it work, managed to stretch it out a little bit. If he can only have a decent early game, he could probably follow through and get a W, but he's only got one more shot in this tournament. Or else he is gone, or else we move on. Kaho and Hawk right after this. We'll see. Seems to be standard so far from both players. We'll see what the hero choice is for Moon. So far, two different choices. Could it be a third? Probably not, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, the Warden would be the other hero, which can be playable at times in the right hands with the right levels. A very impressive hero, but also needs specific features on a map. Easy creeping, normally easy counter expanding, and especially the e easy creeping to level 3 part, not so much a thing here. Also, no mercenaries. It is going to be the Keeper first, very popular on this map, regardless of matchup, really. And... That is going to open the door far and wide for good creeping early game. A big threat right away once he gets level 2 and 3. And a very, very uh, active hero it can be. Moon started here, this was a while ago, at least a year ago. Started selling the TP in the middle at the shop to get boots and staff to be ultra mobile. And look for every opening he can with his hero early on. Yeah, this movement with the keeper has been so good too. Hello. We, uh, sorry to cut you off, but we just got another 100 euro donation by Mozzarella. Been watching you guys for a long time. Finally time to give the support you deserve. Love what you're doing. Let's go, Moon. Let's go, Night Elf. Let's go, Mozzarella. Thank you so much, my man. Thank you. Beautiful. Absolutely Tasty, beautiful. tasty, mozzarella. Mmm. Very good. The video's gonna buy some pizza with that money. And some Grazie. And Grazie. Scooby Doo. Ah, wonderful. Archmage, by the way, creeping instant expansion, which is very, very unusual on this map. Normally, 
normal orange into expansion is so easy for the human and so quick to do. You get two items right away. And most importantly, you get level two. With this creep route, he won't get it unless he finds a tree and kill. Keeper is up here nice and early at level two already. Claws and gloves. Those are great to have. And now the I am really wants, really needs that one kill. If he doesn't get it, this is going to be annoying. He seems to not be prioritizing it as much as you would think he would be. He should be aware of this. Moon should also be aware of this. Moon circles around. As mentioned by Neo earlier, there's going to be a lot of pressure in the expansion. Very hard to defend. This is typically what these games come down to on Tidehunters, weirdly enough, is how well does this harass go? The Keeper has so many opportunities at this timing and this timing alone to get something down. But Yumiko, with the counter-aggression, is a little unorthodox. He's not here to defend his peasants. Can't really say them too big of a fan so far of this AM creep route. He's hurt already. He's still no level 2. If Moon does it really well, this level 2 will be prevented for a long time. Two Treants now, though, at the expansion are hurt. Can't deny it. Oh, no, he could not quite. That is finally level 2 for the AM. That's a big deal. Watch Element is also in the Night of Main base, but only level 1. Doesn't really do too much. And the expansion should be finishing here, but certainly came at a price. Yeah, I'm surprised that Yumiko, you mentioned selling the TP for Moon earlier. I'm surprised Yumiko didn't sell it there to snag a circlet and to buy the dust and to get the staff even earlier. But uh, he did save it, so we'll have that safety net in the future. Could be a TP for Yumiko. Would be surprised to not see a block here. Oh, it doesn't actually get the auto attacks there. He could have forced a TP. I mean, I know he wanted to get the deny, but I think he could have gotten that. Keeper does slip away, makes it to the shop. This is it the classic? Boots and staff play. Oh, no. Only staff and circlet here. Keeper holds on to the teleport scroll. Archers. And the archers. Oh, they have been quite deadly before. Coming out of the shadows, ready for an ambush. He's going to have to TP back, don't you think? The moon's got full mana, full health. He's going to staff into the archers. This has to be, like, has to be a TP. Oh, sick play with the staff. Yes, indeed. And the AM gets caught with his pants down, looking for the counterattack. Oh, if Yumiko is stubborn here and doesn't fall back, this would be yeah. a disaster. He's got to do it. It hurts. It definitely hurts to move across the map. Just have to TP immediately. But when you get outplayed, you get outplayed. Moon has to be careful with his keeper. Doesn't want to have to use his own TP right now after such a nice play. Archer's trying to get in to cancel that tower. You can see it. The darn tower. When's it finally finished? Seems like it should be enough. Enough also for more subs. Thank you, Jim Jabba with the resub and Butt Crumbs with a bunch of gifted subs to the Butt Gang. Butt Clan, Butt Ninja, Butt Samurai, Butt Sword, and Butt Jutsu. Hell yeah. My butt man. Jutsu, what dude. What a family man. <laughs> okay, Keeper back in. The pressure continues. As perfectly mentioned by Neo, this is a real struggle on this map to Keeper harass. So damn good. Looking very much like Turtle Rock. The Keeper's almost level 3 now. That'll be Treant's level 2 if he wants to continue the pressure. And Tier 2 is done for Moon. Well, we have the Tanker. Panda. No, Tanker. That's interesting. Oh, With Pocket Factory I, as well. Yeah, I've seen it before on this map. Pocket Factory can keep pressure up. Although, the Arcane Tower did thankfully finally finish. Can retrain later into Cluster Rockets as well. Does require a lot of levels, though, to be impressive later on. And not committing right now. No. So often you'd see players just throw Pocket Factory down there because whatever. But Moon realizing it probably wouldn't do anything because Yumiko seemed to be defensive. But now Yumiko goes forward. Moon comes back. Going to kill a couple of footmen. I think he's about two footmen away from the level three, and that will help him defend these footmen even better. Tinker goes back in. Pocket Factory will go down, and that's going to be a bit more pressure, but very, very slow pressure on the peasants. Only pressure cooking at very low levels. Is under siege. Are you a rice cooker kind of a guy, Carson? I cook rice in a pot, but we do have a rice cooker. It just takes too long. 45 minutes for rice. I, I do it in 11 minutes in a pot, okay? It's a little worse. It's not as good. But, you know, who do I got to impress, you know? I was at the pub quiz on Thursday, and their question was... Uh, on the Zugspitze, which is the highest mountain in Germany, which is like uh, 3,000 meters, how long does it take to boil an egg? Like, <laughs> hard-boiled egg. And the answer was the 16 hell? minutes. Couldn't believe oh what I saw. 
I wonder if that was fake news. It, that's a weird stat to know. <laughs> has, has somebody tested that? How do we know this? It's, uh, you know, those, that's, those is that science? Pop quizzes, man. They're they're known worldwide for the difficulty. Only only the, the toughest competitors have a chance there. We Another. did not get first place, by the way. No free drinks for us. I have done pub trivia twice, other than the one at Robert Land, not counting that. Buffy the Vampire Slayer pub trivia. Guess how many times I've won. I've done it two times. Just guess. Just throw, throw a guess out there, Remo Demo. Two and twice, buddy? Two and zero. Beat like Dog. 16 other teams. Yeah, no one knows Buffy the Vampire Slayer like I do, sadly. <laughs> Really lonely. <laughs> Especially we are considering that you're much younger than us, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's a lot of things. And that's first on the list for sure. <laughs> anyway, moving on from my uh, sad life. <laughs> Did you have a crush on Sarah Michelle? Of course, who didn't? Seriously, like seriously, who didn't? True. Yeah. Even the cat had a crush on her. <laughs> Tinker, going to be level three soon. Uh, we'll have to retrain, but Pocket Factory can maybe be utilized a little more. I would like to see it be utilized. It's definitely a fun ability on higher levels. Does a ton of damage. Maybe uh, Pocket Factory cheekily into the main base could be good. Yumiko reached tier two. And he's going to reach level three on the Archmage, but definitely a slow start for Yumi, to say the least. What is the second hero? Mountain King. Too much of a surprise there. The keeper getting so much stuff done. Man, I love Moon's keeper play. A couple of weeks back, it felt to me like the keeper was really falling off and was looking pretty weak in all matchups. Like all matchups, actually. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of worried for Moon and some other keeper players. Mostly Moon, though, because he is the number one keeper guy. It seems like the keeper is back in biz, as Jens also showed yesterday. So much damage. This keeper's been so annoying. Yeah. MK? Yumiko just Is accepted. He oh no, Is Sable! He oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, Moon. Almost. Yeah. Moon, you know, what is he now? 37? 38? Still as sharp as ever, you know? Might have glasses now. Might have a little less APM. Still at 300. But, you know, still on point. Watching that keeper. Always. Keeper needs to watch himself once again here in the middle. Uh-oh, Staff is on cooldown right now. If he gets surrounded... Oh! Staff is on cooldown? What? No, that was a TP. Right, that was a TP. Right, that's why he dodged the Storm Bolt. You see, also, I am getting older. The back is hurting more. The hemorrhoids are brutal. Oh, I hear ya. Through it. <laughs> <laughs> Heal words for the Dicker. And another base coming up finally for Moon. Oh, will they fall back? Do we have time for the subs? I think we do. Yet yeah, more subs being gifted by butt crumbs to Jabba's Balls and Jabba's But It seems like they could be friends with some of the other <laughs> beneficiaries. Also, Skeptic8 with the resubs says, I never had a crush on Sarah. That's just a lie. Very unkind Liar. of you. Thumpty with a resub as well. Says, loving the dream team casting. Butt crumbs oh. again, giving us up to the Pink Ranger. Yes. All right. Best Ranger. True. I used to love Power Rangers as well back in the day. Go go, <laughs> so good. You got such a weird taste in it. You're much too young for that. Not as like a not as like a teenager or anything or an adult. You know, I'm not a I'm not a freak, but you know, <laughs> as a as a small child, you know, from the ages of about four till seven, I really like Power Rangers. Uh, what's the latest Power, Power Rangers? Power Rangers was old. I saw the latest Power Rangers movie three times in the movies. Are you saying I'm a freak? That was like three years no. ago. We all know that all Germans are freaks, Neo. Okay. Sexy freak. Yeah, exactly. In the best way possible. Yeah. Best way possible. Big Easy 7K also with the sub first time. Welcome. Welcome. Seems like Moon is really picking apart Yumiko here one by one. He's expanding now bottom left, although that might, might be getting cancelled. And the harass is absolutely everywhere. This is Moon's favorite kind of game. Create space, inflict damage, little pokes and prods, death by a thousand cuts. And this expansion has been uh, feeling the brunt of that damage, that pain. As the peasants are all quite hurt here, but Yumi got the cancel. He did indeed. Well, the pocket factory in the main base is going to eventually kill everything if not dealt with. Luckily, the shredder's there, but it can't get there. Oh, the peasants! Kaboom! But Moon has to fight now. 
He's got to fight, and he doesn't have Cluster Rockets retrains perfectly on time, and now he's ready to fight. All the peasants died on the main. And the harass kind of continues, but now Moon finally has to go back home. Still a winnable fight for Yumiko, absolutely. Mountain Giant upgrades are coming right now, but no MGs in sight still. We have a bit of dispel here against these Watcher Methods. Wisps are also helping out. The clap, though, is looking good against the bears. Keeper needs to help out. His spells, though, can't help out so much against all these priests with all that dispel. Yumiko, I would say, here in the best position he's been in. Yep. This whole series, Moon finds himself in trouble. Despite all of this fancy harass he's been doing, at the end of the day, you have to win a fight. It's simple. Yeah, if he can buy enough time for those MGs to come out of the lores, which it seems like he is doing right now, he should be in a decent position but for the time being. Yeah, Yumiko, definitely. He could do some damage, but force a TP out. I didn't want to use the heal scroll. I'm surprised he's not fighting a little longer. And enough. That's enough fun for the day, I suppose. He's still building a huge army here. Pally yeah. third is coming. He went for tier three early this time, so the Mountain Giants aren't going to hard counter him as much. Moon seems to be in serious trouble here. He now spent all of his bank. He had lots of gold before he's trying to expand again, but I think what he needs most is higher levels. Double level yep. five, I think, is what's required here to keep him in this game in an even state. Is this going to be Mountain King 4? No, not quite, but it will be Archmage level 4 for Yumiko, which is obviously a huge upgrade with the Master Training coming for all the casters. Treants again in the main base. Can you find this Mortar team? Oh, no. Oh, it's a big one. It's going to get level 5 here from the Harass. Nice play. If he gets the Shredder as well. Hank Shredder. Let me guess. You know those weird TV series, but you never watched Breaking Bad. I didn't watch the final season. I watched everything but the final season. At least you watched most of it. Yeah. Keep it to level five. All right, get more treants. They may not have nature's blessing, but they are still pretty damn annoying. And there's so much mana here to keep this up. Tinker, 4.6 though. He's still far away from five, which could be a problem. There is knights already for the mountain giants. 75, 66, supply. Both players, I would argue, in fighting shape at this stage. Yumiko continues to be harassed and has no shredder now, but 500 lumber is going to be good enough, especially with all the upgrades already being completed that he needs. He has animal war training on the way, and frag shards already finished. Towards the expansion goes Yumiko, and it's not even finished for Moon yet. Looks to be yet another cancel. Unless the Tinker with the cluster rockets here can throw a spanner in the works. Here is the first of many of those cluster rockets. Keeper staffs in as well. There's a nice little forest right there you could summon treants from. But the priests are ready with the dispel. Entangled on the knight should be quickly dispelled. Peaceful. There it is. And the damage seems to be lacking right now. Yeah, Moon needs to kill these knights or else the mountain giants can never tank in the front, but he just simply cannot do much right now. Staff out. Heal ward in the back is very efficiently used. Plus the rockets again, slowing down the army. Moon's doing this about as good as he can, but he still doesn't seem to be in fighting shape. Pally far forward. That hurts a lot. Quickly takes him a lot of the HP bar. Good army, though. The rifle, knights, caster army here looking really good. Tinker in trouble. Stumble to his face. The staff is on cooldown at the moment, I think. Moon falling back to the wells. There's a bit of juice still in, but no night time for a long while. See the ward back there. Should be getting casted quickly, though. But this seems to be a much better position all of a sudden for the Nido. Yeah, it feels like Moon did so many things right, but still in a position to not be able to defend here. The ward again, pretty efficient. Is up maybe too long, but it might not really matter. Mortar Team eventually deals with it. Yumiko just can't break through. He's down, or Moon rather can't break through. Down like 30 supply right now. Almost this is looking five, at the though. end. There it is. Can that maybe. swing it? A lot of damage. A lot of damage, but where's the supply? Two mountain giants. At least there's no more knights in this fight currently, but he's got to buy a lot of time for himself. Does have the expansion up and almost mining. Enough fire rifles, baby. If there ever is a winning strategy. Oh my god, those cluster workers did a lot, though. Heal scrolls will be needed. Doesn't have any. Rather than late. Who's going to hold? Who's going to force a TP? <laughs> or there is no TP. Never mind. Who's going to do something here? He's going to get a lot of unit kills, I think, is what's going to happen. Oh my Plus god. Rockets, that's the one. Yeah, so. A mana potion rather could also be bought. The shop is nicely protected up there. Another entangle, another swarm. 
taunt as well. Moon really doing this well, doing as much as he can. Seemed like he was up against a big lead. Staff comes in. Must be a heal scroll now. Yeah, double heal scroll. Oh, and that should swing oh. it. Nice inbound. Dodges that Stormbolt. Yumiko might be a bit too strong to beat now, though. Yeah, it's, Moon was so close. If he got maybe a few more stragglers there, maybe he had an extra cluster rocket. If he was able to clean up a few of those priests before the heal scroll came in, maybe a decent position. But Yumiko, even building a tank now just to really secure this expansion kill. And Moon has to keep defending, he has to keep fighting, and he doesn't really have a lot of Moon Wells left, or any at all. Yeah, everything's hurt here for Moon. Seems like Yumiko should finally be getting on the board. This is a perfect position for him. The late counter expansion, I think, here was the real problem for Moon. Maybe should have yep. get that expansion up earlier. Proxy, rather towards his natural, where it's safer. Maybe the final fight here. Cluster Rockets is still good, but everything is with HP. Two Mountain Giants at least can tank a little bit in the front, but that's what the Knights are for. Tinker has lots of mana, but no health currently. Is Staff off cooldown? It has to be, or else the Tinker is pretty much dead. Luckily, there's no Storm Bolt for Moon. Staff's out the Mountain Giant, but now the expansion is only seconds away from dying. Town is under siege. By the way, what's this MK build? This is a 2 1 1 build. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> I wonder why. It's Has to be a mistake. It's not the norm, but should still be enough. 80 supply. Takes out the expansion here. What is left for Moon? Seems like not much. Main base is still with some gold. About three minutes of mining left, at least for Moon. A little bit more for Yumiko due to the harass earlier. And this should be the final push. Yumiko even with a thousand gold bank to buy more heal scrolls, if so necessary. Down 23 supply currently is Moon. And speaking of Moon, Moonwells are going to start falling to the mortar teams. Plus the rockets again doing some decent damage. Priests are always there to heal up. Good number of them now as well, I like that. Four of them to heal. Sometimes humans are too low with only two or so. Just eating the cluster rockets, doesn't even care. He's got the priests. Oh, Orc Mage. Whoopsies, don't want to lose that one. Would ultimate even save the game right now? Like, if Tinker got level six magically, would that save the game? I don't even think it would. Yeah, Jimmy's got the perfect here. Couple of knights in a fire, life of Moradin's castles, tri hero, good levels, couple of scrolls, too much. Good, sir. There it is. GG. Yumi takes his name and puts his name on the board here. Let's go! Series goes on. Good for us. More Warcraft, more good as we are crossing midnight over there in Asia. Still fighting spirit in them and. Man, that Tinker looked really, really, really good, but not good enough. All that damage by Moon, not enough to break Yumiko's spirit. So many peasant kills yet again. Yumiko has been barely holding on all three games, and finally he made it work for himself. He had a bad early game, but I suppose not the worst of early games. He was able to do a little bit of counter pressure, but even you just thinking back to that town portal he had to do when the archers shadow melted and the keeper staffed in the early game. It was really rough for Yumiko, but he held on the early tier three uh, for Yumiko, as well as the late counter expansion for Moon. I think those are the two things that really got Yumiko on the board. Good to see his stuff is working out. Oh, sorry. Didn't want to cut you off. Yeah, and I wonder about the Tinker. Um, if this had been a Panda level five, wouldn't that yeah. have been more of a threat? Of course, the Panda doesn't grant you the pocket factory for creeping, but... Especially on Tidehunters, there's uh, so many easy camps you can creep with a panda just in a handful of drives, maybe some treants to help you out. Um, I'm still not entirely sold on the Tinker. I feel like with the Demoner, actually, he pairs really well. That's something that Cow has been showing us. Demoner runs in, maybe even Immolation, but just throwing out the right clicks, getting in that right click damage, and the Tinker is there to um, slow everything, stun everything, lock everything in place. But here, it seemed like some damage was really missing. What's not missing is the support by the community towards the War 3 Champions Finals. Richard Gook! No, Richard Huber! Sorry, we got too many Richards in this scene. Richard Huber! $25. Thank you! 
War 3 Champions. And back to Warcraft for keeping Warcraft alive. Current prize pool, $4,138. We could bring that to $4,500. We will crack some records, I'm very, very sure. I can't remember last time we had uh, a, a prize pool like this. Insane, you guys. Season 16 was lower. Season, uh, season 15 was lower. Season 14 was lower. Uh, season 13 was the beginning of 2023. So the highest prize pool in a year for the War 3 Champions Finals. Mwah. Hell yeah, really cool. You guys are making it all possible. Your awesome contributions are helping us out and also helping the players out. We always want to make sure this is a worthwhile tournament for the players here for our celebration of our favorite platform, the War 3 Champions platform. If you guys haven't installed it yet, you should do so pretty much right now. W3Champions.com, you can install that, play Warcraft in its best condition, whether you are a top level player or just a lower level player, there's competition and fun for anyone, whether it be standard Warcraft 3 or uh, Legion DD or other game modes, so much that has been made possible by the War 3 Champions team. They deserve our support, they deserve our praise as well, and they deserve such a celebration as we always love to give and have on these weekends. Right on. And if you think, hey, these games look hella fun, I am a newbie though, where could I possibly go uh, to learn this game? Well, there's a get started guide with exclamation mark get started. I think, or uh, the guide is also available on the WC3 Reddit. But the answer in all of this is join the gym community, a wonderful community teaching people the game. There's a lot of new players coming in right now, coming from Brute War, coming from Age of Empires, coming back after a little bit. This Discord as populated as ever, exclamation mark, gym for the gym community. Shout out, Jim. Shout out all the new players, if there is any. People in the chat that may have been watching. Earthworm Jim as well, for everyone who remembers that Oh, game. yeah. Excellent. That was a, I played that at Game Boy. That was such a good game. Game Boy Color. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Such a great game. I think I played this before I had Windows. I think I played this oh. with DOS commands. Oh, I, okay. I was like... What? Where when were windows invented for houses? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what went through my head. <laughs> it's like what? Let's go. You live in a castle. <laughs> and Neo grew up in East Germany. You know they got those windows pretty late. Uh, hey hey hey! In the nineties. <laughs> Remo, don't make fun of houses without windows because your big hero Kanye West apparently in his what's it called Dondo Academy or something. He has no windows. He's afraid of yeah, glass. He's, he's a visionary. Yeah, true. He's he's reinventing humanity as we speak, guys. Visionary uh, and okay. crazy are, are very very close. Together. I want to distance myself from all these comments, but <laughs> I want the sheep always say. I, uh, the sheep will always say. Do you, do you want to cast the next World Three Champions Finals with Alex Jones? Maybe <laughs> that would and be with Kanye content. West, bro. Best <laughs> cast <laughs> ever. Milo Yiannopoulos is coming on. Let's do it. <laughs> That, that's where I draw the line, is that guy. <laughs> that's where you draw the line. Okay. Yeah. I'll cast with Alex Jones all day. I'm sorry. Hell yeah. Okay? That would be content. That would be content. Yeah, you bring Vido back, it's going to be the perfect team. <laughs> <laughs> you probably got to stream that on kick, though. Yeah, we can do that. We can Whatever do that. it takes. Just one, just one tournament. Just one tournament. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? We'll get, like, a crypto sponsor. <laughs> And a betting sponsor. There it is. Be just absolutely above board and ethical. <laughs> Perfect. That creep check was an inside story. <laughs> All right. The story of this series continues. Map number four, Concealed Hill. Let's see if Yumiko could tie it up. Butt crumbs again and again and again and again with the gifted subs to butt cloth, butt rag, butt napkin, and butt pants. <laughs> Thanks, bro. How many of these accounts has he made, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't the know. The amazing thing is, we, we can see like how, how many gift subs they received before. And for many, for most, it's the first month. So yep. it's also originality. Like always coming up with, with new butts. More ifs and butts all day. Butt crumbs. Absolutely amazing. Didn't you say he's coming to Rara Land this time? He is uh, trying to make it work. I put him on the guest list. On the butt list. Nice. The butt yeah. list. 
Butt based. <laughs> A-list butt crumbs are. Would love to have them there, of course. Rara Land 2024 is in summer this year, August 1st to 4th, baby. There are still viewer tickets available, I believe. I didn't check in a bit, but exclamation mark Rara Land tells us. And uh, if there's some available, then only very, very, very few. So you should be quick and pick them up. We, we, we get to move on now we. to that number four, and it's a it's a new dawn, it's a new day. Mountain King first for Yumiko. Hell Carson yeah. was mentioning it earlier. I've also seen lots of Yumi MK first games. Sometimes very impressive, sometimes very solid, sometimes very cheesy. We'll see what this one looks like. Can be a scary proposition because MK makes creeping more difficult and expanding, especially on a tough map like this. Playing up against the Keeper and the Tree and Harass will be a tough challenge. Yeah. yeah, the expansion definitely a lot harder to create for Yubiko than it would be with the Archmage with the summons. But worth noting, after you get past that stage in the game, you do have the fountains to go to. Um, and also, you know, it's not the easiest map to creep up a second hero on like the other maps we've seen in this series. So getting the Mountain King level 3 early on while you can, while there's lots of creeps available means you will have a stronger early tier 2 stage because you don't necessarily have to creep up what I assume will be an Archmage second from Yumiko as much as you would a Mountain King second. It's going to go for just the standard creep camp off the rip Yumiko does, and then I'm wondering how he's going to play As You mentioned there's a lot of different ways to play it. It could be cheesy or it could be standard, but he might just be playing two bases. Looking like the map movement suggests he's going to be playing two bases, typically how it goes. He's going to wait for nighttime, call all the boys, and then probably go towards there with about eight or nine militia. We had a pretty early Hunter's Hall here as well. Hunts will be joining us before too long. There should be time, as you mentioned, thanks to the delay of the creep. Keeper got the level two. If he sees that ass there, he's officially yeah. the god gamer, if he isn't already. It's kind of flirting with a surround here. It is dangerous. Stormbolt into malicious surround could put a quick end to this harass ambition. And is now the time? Not really. And some peasants here in trouble already. Does so he want to entangle the other peasant? You can get both kills here if he entangled one and got one more auto attack on the next. Oh. Oh, oh surround. In the game. Oh no, he slips out. Second try, maybe? No. Okay. Only one stormbolt, not that much mana. It's really painful yeah. when you try to go for two or three stormbolts and they all fail, then you just want to <sighs> dig yourself a pit in the earth and never get out again. Oh, I hear ya. I hear ya. <laughs> yeah, I've been there many times, dude. <laughs> Anywho, uh, expansion creep going to be happening. If he did sure. get that surround, worth mentioning, it would have been probably game winning. What are you doing here? He's buying a lot of time is what he's doing. Brother. Oh, Moon, can you get back there? I didn't go for a similar play before. Oh, Did you oh. hide in the back with the keeper with the treants blocking him? But this MK is going to force a TP here fairly soon, unless he's the one getting forced to TP. Careful, Moon. Oh. Bash, bash! Oh, the bash kills him! Takes Boom. him out, and just like that, the MK is level 3. Some peasants here are in trouble. Oh, wow. timely bash. You don't often see Moon do things that are so fancy and so greedy and not get away with them. Uh, but that was definitely both. And it was definitely a failed attempt. I like That was a cool idea. I wonder if that's a consistent thing he can do. Four wisps, APs potentially coming up. Is the distraction enough? Yumiko might not be thinking about this because it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> Why did he do that with his keeper? <laughs> the MK is looking very strong right now. He's got lots of HP and armor. The Huntresses seem like they should be bait here. Where are the APs though, brother? Um, yeah. Also keeping the MK busy, making it impossible for him to go to the shop for the dust for a long time. Keeper not getting experience from these kills is really annoying though. Yeah. And level 3 is a big power spike in the early game, and if you don't get it early, you might as well never get it for the Keeper. Because Dispel comes in later on. AP is still not being built. Moon just simply doesn't have the resources, as it seems. He's continued to build Huntresses instead. But if he was building them earlier, they would have already been up by now. A lot of Peasant kills, but not onto the docket of the Keeper's XP. How close is he to 3? Oh my god, he's so far away. Yike, Hunter's Earth. surrounded. Does he have a reveal available? No. Double surround. 
So you're just gonna wait. You may want to come back and try to save these hunts right here. <laughs> oh, he's staffing in. Oh, Arcane, that's a nice bolt just to burn a little bit more mana off the Keeper and forcing the TP there. Yumiko kind of dominating this game. Uh, looked like Kamu was pretty worried about a lab reveal coming in and all those hunts going down. Moon seems to be in a tough spot here. He's got lots of gold now. This could be the time for APs. I'm surprised he isn't building them yet. Huntress is going in for the harass. You can see Footman attempt to surround, but uh, not quite landing it just yet. That's a lot of Huntress's Rima Demo. And the Mountain can get surrounded, but can staff out immediately. At least Moon forces that cooldown. APs, or the Wisps, rather, scouted. Yeah, Moon decided not to go for AP is interesting. Rather, he went for the tech in the end. Tech oh, after all, of. just like Staff Funk claims to be human after all. Are we sure though? Have we seen them without helmets? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Not yet. You know that uh, there's a rumor that Banksy is apparently in massive attack. Have you heard that before? No, I have not. Yeah, I heard that recently and I was like, oh. I don't know. I kind of believe it, but I don't think there's any evidence, so maybe we have to ask Alex that one. He is what do we start? In the world. Keeper surrounded again. Oh, but the MK also in trouble. TP or staff, what's going to come out, out here in time to save these heroes? Oh. Mountain King. <laughs> Double click TP. He's right here. He's right next to the town hall. Does he have a no. bolt? They're not quite no. the mana. Can he get a patch? No, no. Watch, is going to get the kill? Oh, no. You, that's a big mistake. Oh no, he was in such yeah, a good hurts. position. Oh, oh no, Yumi, no! And that's gonna do it. The hammer giveth and the hammer taketh away. And taketh it the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how the saying goes. Oh man. What a fun series, though. Moon, uh, not as joyous as we are, but for him, I assume it was a lot more stressful than it was for us. He is in the quarterfinal in a hell of a series. Uh, 